Hello and welcome to another Play It and Say with me, Kugelite. So today we're going to be looking at another indie title, uh, Demsin, Survival in the Wild, Demisin. So I hear what you're saying, Kuga. You don't like walking simulators. No, this isn't actually true. With indie games, I think survival is a nice, easy way to lay down uh, an easy game. And then you can build strong points of the game around this sort of much weaker central point. I know some people do actually just like the gameplay of survival, but I find it a loop that just helps facilitate the other parts of the game. But this is the best one that I've ever played. It's in early access, it's a survival game, it seems to be from maybe a Russian developer. Uh, it's definitely it's a character set which I don't have on my keyboard. But anyway, so uh, the options menus, we've got audio, which you'll notice is all the way down, but yet you can still hear the audio, and we'll come to that in a bit. But your video graphics, you've got your mouse, and then you've got something which I think they've left in, example, compens. Unless they're planning on developers developing DLC for this, of course. But anyway, let's jump into the game and I'll show you why this is the best one that I've ever played. So, loading in. Loading in. So, look how pretty it is. It's really put a lot of effort into this. So you can see you've got ferns, you've got grasses, you've got trees that actually move in the wind. So all in all, a very pretty game. And the map itself is very, very big. The uh, two and so hours that I've put into the game so far have, uh, I don't think I've seen all the map. Uh, in fact, I'm hoping I haven't seen all of the map. And the reason for this is because I can't find any content in this game. Uh, I've looked through the forums just to see whether the developer maybe had laid out these expectations. But there are talks about herbs, deer, ravens. Uh, some sort of scheme where you don't know if someone's watching you or you're supposed to be watching them. Uh, and a screenshot of a hut somewhere which I've not been able to find. So we have our normal tropes. In the core gameplay, you see you've got your food, you've got your health, and you've got your stamina. So when you walk, your stamina doesn't go down. But as always, in all of these games, I do not know why this decision is made. You have to walk at about half the pace of what a person actually walks at. When you hold run, that's fine, it runs. And in all fairness, the stamina meter is fairly fair. You can see it uh, slowly ticking down there. You can get uh, some quite some nice distance on that before the game starts having a bit of a freak out at us. But then you're then stuck with this pace while the stamina meter goes up, basically as slowly as it was going down. So you're a nice catch twenty two there with that one. Well done, lads. So you got your health, you got your food. So let's go drink some water. Oh, there's no way to find what the key bindings are supposed to be. I've pressed around the keyboard, and as far as I see, you've got WASD, Q, which brings up the menu for some reason, and I, which brings up an infantry. So let's try and drink some of the water. No, nope. left click doesn't do anything. Right click doesn't do anything. E doesn't do anything. Space, oh, space bars jump, and control is crouch. And shift is also run. So even if there was something to interact with, I can't actually figure out how you're supposed to interact with it. Because I'm pretty sure I heard them saying that drinking water was supposed to be a feature that they've now put into the game. But why does this tick me off? Um, because it is early access and I should be pandering my expectations to meet that. Well, it's pissing me off mainly because you're supposed to be able to get a feel of the game from early access. This isn't a game. This is a big, big map. And if you have put like the amount of hours it would take to actually get a half competent game into making this map, and I can believe that you have, because it looks it looks pretty. It looks very nice, it looks competent. The trees look like they all sort of belong, even though strangely some of them look like they're in different seasons to other ones, but and again if you 
can't really expect uh, perfection and the change in colour is quite nice. It sort of breaks up the pattern a little bit, so I can't complain too much about that. But where's the feel for this game? Where's the game part of it that I'm supposed to be seeing whether I would want to come back to this or not come back to this? By releasing such a big world and filling it so sparsely, you've stabbed yourself in the back. Anyone buying this, and I know there are positive reviews on here, and I do believe you have some friends. No one's going to find out or enjoy the experience. If anyone's positively rating this, it's because they paid money for it, and now they're regretting it. Because if I wanted this sort of experience of just looking around at a pretty world, I'll slap on my Gear VR, and I'll have a much prettier world to look around. This is competent for a game, but that's the point. This is a game. You need to make this a game. And it's just... Oh. Anyway, this was supposed to only be a short one to show you how not to do early access and survival. But no, I can't go off until I've uh, shown you something else. So the volume sliders, they don't work, okay? So I'm not going to talk for the next 10 seconds, but just listen to this. And you'll have this constantly quite loud through your headset. And that gets quite annoying after about five minutes. Never mind two, three hours. After about five minutes, that gets tedious. So, my recommendations for this game is to fuck it off. But anyway, enjoy the world. Wild.